Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Celebration this morning. Let's stand up and worship God this morning. We're singing oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. The fountains I know are washed out, washed out, drenched in blood. Oh, drenched in blood. Oh, you sing all souls, all souls and so by the blood of the Lamb I'm about to sing. Peyton, I'm one of the worship leaders here this morning at St. Celebration Church. 
Look to your left and your right and welcome each other this morning.
on, just the voices. Come on, sing it out this morning. You are the Lord. Come on, church. Come on, give them glory and praise today. Shining all the stars in glory. Yes. Your love is like a wild ocean. Can we do that bridge again, Carlos? Come on, let's do that bridge again. Not to us. We're not here for our glory, but we're here for your glory. Not to us. Come on, church. To your name. Come on. We lift up. Oh, come on, we exist to bring you glory today, God. Not to us, but to My life doesn't make sense unless I bring you glory today, God. Come on. Oh, not to us. Here we go. Here we go. Not to us, but to your name. Come on, all glory, all praise, and all honor to you, Jesus. Not to us, but to your name. Let us love, love you today. Let him love you today, church. You are the Lord. You are the Lord Almighty. How shining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Come on, not to us. Come on, not to us as we end it here. Not to us. It's all for your glory. Come on. Not to us. Come on. Come on, with hands raised this morning, not to us, but to you, Jesus. We're reaching for you today, Jesus. Come on. Not to us, but to your name. One more time, not to us. We lift up. Not to us. Not to us, but to your name. We lift up. Jesus a hand this morning. Amen. 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 I love that. Don't you? Not to us. Our life will never make sense until it's bringing God glory. Isn't that awesome? Amen. As we get ready for our teaching time, they're going to lead us in one more this morning. My name is Rob and I'm the lead pastor here. And I don't know about you, but I never get tired of declaring his goodness. I never get tired of declaring his majesty. But here's the thing. Will you do me a favor today as we go into this next song? Will you just accept his love this morning? Amen. He's got enough to go around, I promise you. But sometimes we allow the mess of yesterday. Sometimes we allow things to get in the way. And would you just, as we go into this next song, will you just say, Holy Spirit, kick down any wall or get rid of any barrier so I can fully receive the love that you have for me. Amen. Will you just say that to yourself? I accept your love today, God. Amen. I accept your love. I put myself in a position this morning to receive what you freely want to give through Jesus. Amen. Lead us, Peyton.
ready for our teaching time this morning. Come on. Would you just put your hands like this this morning and say, I, I receive your love this morning, God. I receive your love, Lord. I receive your love. Come on. Oh, I receive your love, God. Father, we ask today, God, that you continue to pour out your love in this house today. God, that the love, your love, would be so manifested in this place that people would not leave here the same, God. Father, I pray against the demons of the past to be broken in the name of Jesus. I pray against generational curses to be broken in the name of Jesus, God. I pray that situations and powers and strongholds, God, be broken in the mighty name and power and presence of Jesus this morning. And Father, we declare that we receive, we accept your love this morning, God, as you are lavishly pouring out of this house today. We receive it, God. We receive it, God. And we thank you for loving us, God. Come on, tell them you receive it. Oh, I receive it, Lord. Come on. the anger, whatever it is, God, we are saying right now, take it. We are laying it at your feet right now. And we're asking that anything that would keep us from fully surrendering to you, Jesus, that it be broken, that it be kicked down, that it be smashed for your glory today. Father, right now, we release it and we let it go. And we receive your love today. We receive your love today. Come on, I just feel there's someone in the house today who's saying, no, God can't love me. And the Holy Spirit is screaming loud in this congregation saying, yes, he can. It's not because of anything you've done or haven't done. It's because of everything that Christ has done. Amen. Come on, just receive it as you're being seated this morning. Just receive it right there in your seat and say, I surrender to you, God. I surrender to you, God. I'm giving all my mess, all my junk, all my stuff to you right now. I'm letting it go. I'm tired of worrying about it. I'm tired. I'm 
letting it go this morning. Come on, tell them you're letting them go. Oh, I give it all to you, Jesus. Come on. Oh, I say yes to you, Jesus. Oh, I'm letting it all go this morning. Oh, I'm letting it all go. Come on, let it go. Let it go. I'm laid it at your feet. Oh, I'm laid it at your feet. Come on. I just want all of you, Jesus. This may be foreign to some of you, but listen, we just want to go after the heart of God this morning. We just want to go after the heart of God this morning. Father, we want you. We want all of you. And whatever is distracting, whatever is keeping us from going after you, God, we want it gone right now. Oh, we give it all to you, Jesus. Oh, with hearts abandoned, with hearts open wide this morning. Oh, with hearts open wide this morning. We receive your love. We receive your love, Jesus. Come on. Come on, there's a breakthrough for someone this morning. Oh, I receive your love. Oh, with hearts abandoned, with arms lifted high this morning. We just say we want all of you, Jesus. I don't want to do church the same way, Jesus. I don't need religion this morning. Oh, I need a relationship with you, Jesus. Come on, that's for someone this morning. Just want all of you. Just want all of you, Jesus. Oh, you're so good. Oh, you're so good. So, Father, we pray right now, God, as we get ready to transition, that we not miss this moment right now, God, that you want to dwell in this place with us this morning. God, that we didn't come here just to play religious games, that we just didn't come here to do short church as usual, Father, but our hearts are to be fully sold out to you. We desire a relationship with you because you desire a relationship with us. God, we pray for every church in this region that Jesus would be glorified in every house and that our love would be loud for you. God, would you do what only you can do today for the Father's glory? Amen. Say amen with me this morning. Amen. Amen. Please be seated this morning. Listen, if you're brand new and you say, well, man, I don't know what that crazy Mexican man was doing up there. Here's the reality. The reality is you don't need our programs and our worship guides and our stuff on the screen. You need a massive encounter with Jesus this morning. And that's what we want for you. And sometimes it's easy to get lost in the stuff, right, and forget why we're really here this morning. So if you are a guest this morning, we have our uh, kids celebrate. Uh, one of our dream team leaders and uh, our kids leaders, Miss Laura, is over here to my left, your right. This is the time that our kids transition to Kids Celebrate. If you would love your kids to go to Big Kids Church, we call it Kids Celebrate here. You're more than welcome to send them. Here's the only thing that we ask, that if you haven't electronically checked them in, that you do that, okay? Because we take your child's safety and security very seriously. You will get a little label that, let, that matches your label that way when you go to pick them up after worship. Um, they will be back there uh, waiting on you. All right, because we definitely don't want to send them with the wrong parent. Amen? Amen. All right. Number two is about next steps. If you are planning to do next steps today, uh, we do this on the first and third Sunday of every month. Today is steps three and four. This is just a journey that we love to take people on that helps you find out about our heart, our mission, but also to empower you to be the leader that God has called you to be. So steps three and four, I know some of you have already signed up for it. Here's how, if you say, well, Pastor Rob, I forgot all about it. Okay. Here's the easiest thing to do. Just stay after worship. We're going to have pizza for you. We're going to have child care available for you 
as well. Okay, we're going to make it as easy as possible for you. Uh, the final thing I'll mention real quickly is about the worship guide. All this stuff is in your worship guide, by the way. All right, but the final thing that I'll mention to you is about community groups. They launch tonight. Okay, so community groups are starting and we are so excited about this. And friends, let me just tell you something. And I say this all the time to our leaders and to our dream team. Community doesn't happen by accident, right? You have to intentionally seek out community. So I want you to find a group that you can get plugged in. If it's me, I'm going to the freedom group, right? That's one of the groups that I'm going to put on my list because we're going to be walking with men and women and we're just going to watch God set them free. You know, that's one of our anchor points here is that we say we love, serve, and we reach because we want people to know God. And the second point is this, because we want people to find freedom. And that's some of what God was speaking to us just a few moments ago is finding true freedom, letting go of that junk from yesterday because how many people know that the mess of yesterday can keep you from the mission today, amen? That the enemy has a really, he, he's really good at doing that. And so freedom is going to all be about, it's going to all, it's going to be about everything that we just talked about, about freedom. Sorry, I got my, my tongue tied there. Um, before we pray and dive into our teaching time, I just want to make a mention of the sermon notes as well that are in your worship guide. It should look just like this. We'd love for you to follow along with us this morning. And, um, man, God's just been doing some amazing things through this series and just hearing some of the feedback of, of God just really opening up people's eyes and, and changing them and I know today is going to be no different because we're going to be talking about uh, what is God's will for my life. You ever asked that question? What is God's will for my life? Have you ever felt like you weren't in the will of God? Have you ever felt like you were just out there floundering and you were like, what the God? Why am I out here? You know, you told me to move to this new city. You told me to go to this church. You told me to do this and this. What, what am I doing? What is your will for my life? Well, today I, I want to talk to you a little about and we're going to pray but what I want to talk to you about is I don't believe that God's will is hidden from your life. I believe he wants to reveal his will for every single person in this place today. And that's what we're going to believe. And we're going to go to scripture and we're going to see that, okay? So let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, that you love us so passionately, God, and so fiercely, God. And Father, as we dive into your word, would you just illuminate to every heart the words of life? And God, may you get the glory during this time as you have the previous part of service. And when you continue to get the glory, we thank you for your words. We thank you for your, your scripture in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The other thing I will say is if you want sermon notes, Mr. Carlos, one of our dream team leaders is walking around. You can just let him know. All you have to do is just kind of do your finger like this and he'll, he'll see you. Uh, and then I just want to make a mention as well for those that are watching us online. Thank you so much for, for uh, jo joining us and tuning in and let us know where you're watching from. Give us a like, a comment and all that good stuff, okay? All right, so let's dive in today to part six. This is the final part of this What the series that we've been in. And this whole series is based about, if we're to be brutally honest, about we've all had this type of season in our life or seasons in our life. Yes, for those that are willing to be honest, right, we've all had these type of moments like, what is going on, God? What is happening in my life? Why am I going through this? Why did this happen to my job? Why did this happen with my relationship? Why is this happening in whatever the case may be? And so we wanted to tackle some really hard issues during this past six weeks. And what we wanted to start with was this problem of evil and suffering. If you remember from weeks one and two, what we talked about was how can this all good, all loving God allow evil and suffering into the world? All right, so we talked about that. In week three, we talked about what it means to be a, a sinner saved by grace and a hypocrite versus a hypocrite. Because how many people know that one of the biggest objections about coming to church is I don't want to go to church and be a hypocrite like all those hypocrites. We talked about why aren't my prayers being heard? And do you know there's things that you can do, sure, not, not my words, but in Scripture that can hinder the communication between you and God. And so we talked about five communication barriers. We talked about three types of prayers that God loves to hear. We also talked about last week, if you remember, this offensive truth that, God, why would you save me? Why would you uh, uh, ask me to surrender my whole life to you and then go preach this offensive truth in our culture that you are the only way, the truth, and the life? Because Oprah says there's plenty of gods, right? 
She says there's many ways to God. It's like a lot of other people in her status and her notoriety. It's offensive to go out into this world and say, you're the only way. And one of the things that I wanted you to take away from last week is that it's not you that's saying it. You're just repeating the words of its founder. And trust me, he's big enough to handle the criticism. Amen? And so last week we looked at that. Today we're going to look at what is God's will for my life. Why doesn't God show me his will for my life? Now, if you grew up in church, okay, you probably heard the pastor, the special evangelist, the Bible school teacher, the BBS person go, God has a purpose for your life. How many people have ever heard that in church before, okay? Right? God has a purpose in your life. Now, let's, you don't have to raise your hand on this one. I'll raise my hand on this one. But how many people wanted to scream out, yeah, what is it? Right? You keep telling me that every week that I come here, but what is it? Duh, you've been telling me that forever. But what is my purpose? Right? Who do I marry? What job do I go to? What, what, what kind of clothes do I wear? Do I relocate? What kind of college do I go to? What kind of car do I buy? Do I take this job or do I not? Which direction do I go, God? Right? Or have you ever asked yourself, how involved is really God? How, how, how involved does God really want to be in my life? Will he help me find the right church? Will he help me find the right spouse? Once again, will he help me find the right job? Right? You don't have to raise your hand, but the reality is all of us have been in those moments in our lives. Which direction do I go? If God would just give me something, right, then I would know which direction to go. Let me put it more universally for the Christian and the non-Christian. Have you ever asked yourself, why am I here? What's the purpose? You know, I was reminded of this question as I was studying this week. Many of you know because you saw it on Facebook and it's all over the news and, and, and all over social media that Pastor Jared Wilson from Southern uh, California he actually was a pastor at a friend of mine's church up in Nashville for a while, and then he relocated to be uh, with Pastor Greg Laurie, which some of you know if you've been around Christianity time at all. But he took his own life, and he was an advocate uh, to fight against suicide and depression. And what I loved about Pastor Jared is that he was always honest about it. And I've said this quite frequently, and I feel like I need to say it this morning in this moment. It's okay to not be okay. Okay? It's okay. Just come to Jesus with it. It's okay to be hurting. But here's the thing. God doesn't want you to do it by yourself, right? But I'm sure a lot of people in his situation, sometimes you can ask yourself and you can get into a point, such a deep, dark place of what am I really doing here? And can I just be blunt with you? There are, there, the reality is the Bible doesn't give us clear answers or specific answers to every little detail. Like, what kind of shoes should I wear? Kohans or polos, right? But God does give us his word to provide us direction, okay? And I want to share that with you today. And here's the thing I want you to see, is that God doesn't want to be a distant father who says, figure it out by yourself, young man or young lady. But that's how some of us view God but rather an intimate father who wants to be involved in every detail of your life. Let me say that again. See, I didn't grow up with a father, so it was really hard for me to get to that place with God because I'm like, God, I got it. You ever been there? I got this, God. I've done without an earthly father. Yeah, they say you're my father, but I got this. I can handle this. And maybe some of us are in that place today where we think that God is just a father who says, okay, here's my Bible. Go figure it all out by yourself. Or here's this thing called life. Go figure it out all by yourself. And the reality is he wants to be an intimate father involved in every detail of your life. He wants to be involved. He's there. But here's, here's the bottom line. Many times, because we don't feel like God is hearing us. Listen now, this is for someone today. Many times, because we don't feel like God is hearing us, when we ask, what is your will for my life, we make up our own answer. And we devise our own will. And the reality is many of us are frustrated or some of us are frustrated today because we're living out our will and not his will. We've chosen our answer 
versus his answer. What is God's will for my life? And how many people know it's easier to devise your own plan and own will for your life? Amen? It's easy. We can make excuses. We can all, we can, we, listen, we can all manufacture what we think God's will for our life is. And here's the sad reality is the enemy will trick us into thinking that we're justified in it. And so I want to talk to you about that today. I want to look at some things. What is God's will for my life? So I want to look at four popular methods that are not very healthy. Okay? We're going to go through these real quickly. Four popular methods. And listen, it's going to be somewhat funny to us because we've all been guilty of it. Okay? Myself included. But here's the first one. It's in your notes. How many people have ever been guilty of this one? God, I know your will for my life. I'm looking for a sign. Ooh, I see 4-4 four, four right here on this tablet. And I was just in James 4-4. Four, four. Right? Ooh, PV starts with a P. That must mean power in my life. And it's silly, but a lot of the times, this is what many believers look for and non-believers, is if you'll just show me a sign. Now listen, listen now. I'm just going to tell you how unspiritual I am sometimes. I drive down the road and I go, God, if you will just give me a sign. And God tells me, I already gave you my Bible. <laughs> now, none of you ever deal with that. I know that because you guys look really elite. All right. But looking for a sign. I like to say, I like to, I like, th these kind of people sometimes annoy me a little bit because they, 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 they look for a demon behind every bush type deal. Right, and everything's about a sign, right? It's, it's a, a Moses in the burning bush moment. And listen, I'm not saying that God cannot speak to you in a sign, right? Maybe you went out today and you saw a cloud that looked like the face of Jesus. I'm not saying it wasn't the face of Jesus. All I'm saying is if you bet God's will on that, friend, you're going to be on very shaky ground, okay? We're not called to live our lives by signs. Well, Pastor Rob, isn't there signs in the Bible? Didn't God do it for the book? Yes, he did for specific contexts and for specific seasons in those people's lives. Yes, I do believe God can speak through signs. I do believe in signs and wonders and all those things. But what I believe more than that is that he has called us to live according to his word, not a sign. And this is what we teach here, that true believers, right, never follow signs and wonders but signs and wonders should follow true believers, okay? So I need you to see that this morning. Here's the second popular method, and there again, I know we've all been guilty, but I have. I'm just listening for a voice, just a voice. Oh, just a voice with my candle on in my baby breath voice, 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 yes. But how many people know there's a lot of voices out there? Amen? And how many people know that when we're just listening for the voice, that emotions and feelings make really horrible and fickle gods? <laughs> just a voice. Just say that to yourself, voice. Right? I feel like I should spray a can of Febreze right now as I'm doing that. <laughs> voice. Psst. Right. The dream team gets mad at me because I Febreze the house of God up before service. I'm like, listen, I want the house of God to smell good. Right? Right. Here's the third popular method that I've seen in, in, in 20 years of ministry. Well, let me, let me back up. Let's, let's go back just real quickly. Real quickly, I want to read this. We can, we can leave it on the screen. I love what Pastor Rick Warren says. He says it this way. He says, stop listening for a voice and start looking for a verse. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Start listening for the voice and get in the Bible, all right? So the next one is looking for an open or closed door. Boy, I've, I've bet seasons on my life on this one. And listen, I'm not saying God, God doesn't speak to you in a still, small voice. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, that God doesn't speak in signs. I'm not even saying that opened and doors closed or is a bad thing. What I'm saying is this can't be the ultimate thing. See, some of us are living our lives solely based on this. But can I just be honest with you? Listen, come in real close. The devil opens doors too. The devil opens doors too. 
And just because a door is closed, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to go through it because here's what our misconception is. Our misconception is, oh, if it's closed, it's probably difficult. I don't need to go through it. And the reality is just because it's difficult, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to go through the door. But that's what we do. Oh, it was just an open door and a closed door. It closed on me. Not hating, because I've lived my life like this too. Well, God, it closed. When the reality is Jesus wants to kick that thing down and say, walk through it because I'm with you. See? Have you noticed that all these seem to be very subjective? Feelings-based. I'm looking for a sign. I'm listening for a voice. Looking for an open or closed door. But here's one that I see quite frequently, especially among a lot of young people, right? And that is listening to the wrong people. See, the book of Proverbs says that we should have many counselors and we should have people giving us advice. But I truly believe that if you're not careful, you can listen to the wrong people. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor Rob? The reality is this, is that are the people that you're counseling with and going to advice for to seek out the will of God, or is it truly with pure motives and pure intentions to really hear what God has to say through those people? Do they know the word of God? Do they love God? Have they been serving God? Are they established in the Lord? Or are you seeking out your own agenda and going, I'm just going to get my group of five people that I can go whine and complain to and talk about this and talk about that so they will reaffirm what I want to do in my heart because I really have no intention of listening to them or God. Oh, snap, it's getting real now, isn't it? Oh, glory, help us. This is when I need an organ player on Sundays like this, right? Let me say that again. Are we really going to get godly counsel from the right people, or are we just going to people that we know will be yes men and yes women that will just reaffirm what our selfish hearts want to do anyways? What is the will of God for my life? This is why I believe it's so important that you have godly community. I'm very fortunate as a pastor to have friends that not only go to church here, but other friends that I can go and talk to and that I go and they have full permission to speak into my life and go, hey, Rob, you're missing it on that. Hey, Rob, I don't agree with that. Hey, Rob, and listen, they'll tell you we don't agree on every little thing. But they will tell you this, that if you don't have those kind of people in your life, you will get off into the far right and the far left really quickly. You've got to have people in your life that will go, no, that's not God's best for you. You've got to have people that look you straight in the eye and say, no, that's not God's plan for your life. See? But in this feel good, my feelings matter, they're the most important thing culture, we don't like that. We like people that just tell us how wonderful we are. We like people that just agree with everything that we do. Amen. I mean, let's just be real about it, right? Amen, Rob. You're, you're such a great preacher. Yeah. Amen. All right. But this is why it's important. Look what Proverbs 12, 15 says. The way of fools seems right to them. Listen, it's not in your notes. Proverbs 12, 15, if you want to write it down. The ways of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advise, okay? The wise listen to advise. You know, one of my good friends is in the audience today, and his name is Dale. You guys literally can't miss him because he's 7'2", okay? But I never go to Dale and go, hey, will you give me some advice? But in my mind, I go, but I'm not going to listen to you. Now, Dale will tell you we do disagree on some things, But I trust Dale because I know Dale's lived with the Lord. I know Dale was a pastor. I know Dale counsels all the time with people. I know Dale ultimately in his heart wants what God wants for my life, right? But Dale will tell you that. Did that happen in one day? No. It happened in us building a relationship. Community doesn't happen by accident. But Dale will tell you this too, and he's told me the same thing, and he'll, he'll tell you. If you want to look over, he'll shake his head. Dale has 150% permission to say, no, that's not God. No. Right? And he'll tell you that the same, it's reciprocated, that I'll go, hey, Dale, that's not what God wants for you, man. 
See? Some of us are f- trying to find the will of God by, let me, sh- let me see a sign, God. I just need a sign. I need one more sign. Right? Some of us are looking for the will of God by listening to a voice. But the reality is a lot of times if we're not grounded in the word of God, God's voice will be drowned out by all the other voices of the world. Right? Some of us are looking for God's will, and I just want to open and close door. If it's open, it's God's will. If it's closed, it's not God's will. The last one is listening to the wrong people. Right? We can be guilty of listening to the wrong people. Have you ever felt like God's will is like this? And I don't know if they still play this game or not because... You know, I'm a little bit older now, and the games are different, right? My son's trying to teach me how to play Fortnite and all that kind of stuff, you know. But when I was a kid at the swimming pool, we used to play this game called Marco Polo, okay? And I think sometimes we think God's will is like that, don't we? Where God, like, God's like, close your eyes. (laughs) And all the angels, and they're like, and God's over here going, Marco! Marco, and like God's playing. You ever do that with somebody in the pool? And like everybody's laughing, you know, and you're like trying to be real stealth in the pool, like. And it's like, I think sometimes we think that's how God is with us, that he's playing spiritual Marco Polo with us. Marco. Polo. Marco. You guys know what I'm talking about if you ever played that game. It was fun. But how many people know that when you feel like God is playing that kind of game with you spiritually, it's not very fun at all? And the reality is this. God doesn't have you on some wild scavenger hunt going, if you collect all these items, then ding, ding, you get to the next level and my will will be revealed for you. I believe and I want to propose to you this morning I want to propose that God isn't hiding his will from us. That he truly wants you to understand his will for your life and for mine. And you say, well, Pastor Rob, what what does that mean? Well, I want to give you three things that I believe will help you today begin to understand the will of God for your life. And listen, these four popular methods, I'm not saying that God doesn't give these things. and I'm just saying that can't be the ultimate thing can't be the ultimate thing and many of us are living off of these four popular methods and we're not really living according to what God wants us to live to and how to find him so I believe if you look on your sermon this though on the second part of the page I don't believe necessarily it's a revelation issue as much as it is a reading the Bible issue that's your first point there I don't believe it's a revelation issue as much as it is a reading the Bible issue let me put it to you in a non-Christianese way In other words, which content are we consuming the most? Are we consuming God's content? Because the content that we consume the most from whatever person or individuals or entity and organization is what we become like the most. See? I don't believe it's a revelation issue. I saw this meme on Facebook where my friend posted the other day. It said, God, speak to me. And it had this like person doing this. And then it had a hand from heaven, God doing this, giving him his Bible. I don't believe necessarily that it's a revelation issue. I believe that with my whole heart. It's not a revelation issue. It's a consuming God's content issue. In the scripture that you see, and we'll get to that in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Can we go back to that in the translation, uh, the Passion Translation? I'm going to read it to you real quickly. I wanted to get through the four popular methods, and then I want to get into the Scripture. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 from the Passion Translation says, Trust in the Lord completely. We all, if you grew up in church, you heard this Scripture many, many times. And do not rely on your own opinions. I'm reading from the Passion Translation, okay? Some versions say your own understanding. With all your heart... With how much of your heart? With all of your heart, rely on him to what? To guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. How many decisions? Part decisions? Some decisions? All decisions. Okay? 
He will lead you in all the decisions and every decision you make. Become intimate with him, right? I want you to underline. I, I yellowed it there, but in your notes, underline that, circle it, put a whole bunch of arrows because what happens, and I was telling this to somebody the other day, is a lot of times, listen, he has to be Lord and, and Savior first, but many of us never transition into knowing him as an intimate father. He wants to be involved in every decision in your life. Okay, that's for someone today. Yes, he's Lord and Savior, but he wants to be intimate with you. He wants you to be intimate with him. And I know when we say that word, some people get a little kind of, ooh, can we say that in church? No, because this type of intimacy is pure. If you're going to have a true relationship with someone, there has to be more than just surface level conversation, yes or no. It has to get deeper than how are you doing, doing great. God wants to get in every one of ours mess. He's not intimidated by your mess or my mess. He wants to be involved in every detail of your life. Be intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. Let's fast forward back again to the, it's not a revelation issue, it's a reading the Bible issue. Right there underneath your first headline, it says Proverbs 3, 5 from the New Living Translation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and what? And lean not on your own understanding. But can I just be honest with you? How many people like me like their own understanding? I mean, really? I mean, if we're just to be really honest about it, you're like, God, I really like my understanding. I know quite a bit. I scored a 33 on the ACT, God. I feel like I'm pretty stinking smart. I know you're sovereign, but you didn't score 33 on the ACT. I didn't score 33 on the T. I didn't online. I'm not, that's, I'm not referring to myself, okay? Right. But isn't that what we do? God I, God, I know you're sovereign, but I got this. And so the scripture for us a lot of times reads, trust in the Lord with some of our heart, right? and lean only on your understanding when you really need it. That's how it's read in my life at times. So I don't think it's necessarily a revelation issue as much as it is a reading the Bible issue. Look what the psalmist said in one Psalm 119, 105. He says, your word is a what? Is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. If you're in a dark place today, friend, dive into the word of God. And let that light shine bright again and let him guide you and let him direct you to wherever he wants you to go. I'm going to put it to you this way. If we really want to know the will of God for our lives, then we must center our lives around the word of God. He can't be the backup source of understanding. He has to be the main source of understanding. The second point I want to make to you is I don't believe necessarily it's not a revelation issue. It's not. I believe it's a relying on God issue. But see, here's the thing. We can't begin to rely on God if we never read and find out who God really is and what his character is all about. Also, when I was a kid, I don't know if they do this anymore or not. Plus, we were poor and we couldn't afford anything, so we just kind of made up stuff. But I think everybody's pretty much done this. But you ever played the trust game with some folks? You know what I'm talking about? Where like your friends were supposed to catch you if you fell back. And did you ever have that one jerk of a friend who just lets you fall and you hit your head? Okay. I'm sorry for you, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. All right. (laughs) But how many people know you're probably not going to go play that game with a bunch of random strangers? If I said, hey, let's everybody play the trust game today. Okay, get up here, Peyton, and just fall back, and let's hope that some of these people catch you that you've never met before. How many people know that Peyton would probably be very hesitant to come up here, right? But here's the, th- here's the point that I'm trying to make. We're not going to rely on God if we don't know God. Do we really believe that God will catch us when we fall, when we stumble? And the only way that we can find out about him is to read what he has given us in his word. Proverbs 3, 5, we're in this Proverbs 3 again. Scripture, it says this, in all your ways, submit to him. 
and all of them. Submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. I think the kicker is, is that we don't like the word all. We like the word partly or some. In some of my ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. He will light up the path. He will guide you in every direction. I don't have to go and listen to the wrong people. I don't have to look for signs. I don't have to do all this other stuff that's so popular in our culture because I'm so in tune with God because I've submitted all my ways to him. See? All your ways to God. It's full reliance, full dependence on God. Walking in the will of God requires us to be consuming the word of God. Growing in the wisdom of God requires us to be in right relationship with God. That's what James says right here in James 1.5. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, okay, you should ask God. He didn't say you should go ask 50 people. It said you should ask God. Because look at what he says, who gives, how does God give? Listen, friend, if you know nothing else about God, you can go read John 3, 16, and you can see that he's a generous giver. And he doesn't fall short in this category, that if you need wisdom today, go ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Whatever decision you have in your life today to make, are you asking God or are you saying, God, I'm going to settle for the four that we just talked about? Because if you live your life by the four that we just talked about, you'll be a very frustrated person. Because can I just be really, really, really honest with you? There are seasons in my life where I ask God for a sign and he never gave me one because he said, I already gave you this. God, I want to know your will for my life. But here's the other thing when it comes to relying on God. If anyone's like me, I hate waiting. You know what I'm talking about? Even in the drive-thru, it's supposed to be fast food, and it's not fast enough sometimes. Can I get an amen in the house with God? Amen, right? Now, Chick-fil-A, I let them get away with it because they're God's people, you know, and they bless you, and they tell you it's my pleasure and all that kind of stuff. And you want to be mad, and by the time you get to the window, they're like, hey, it's my pleasure to serve you today. I'm like, you know what? I was a little mad when I came around the corner, but I'm okay now because you done smiled at me and told me how wonderful I was. We good. We good. You could even, you could even take some of my fries out if you want to. That's okay. But don't we hate waiting? That's why we have microwaves. That's why we have fast food. That's why we have Amazon Prime. Thank you, Jesus, right? That's why we have all these things because we don't want to wait. We were on the soccer field yesterday because my, my boys play soccer and we were burning up. And uh, one of the guys, this girl goes, this lady, this fellow soccer mom tells this other guy, she goes, oh, I really like your, your necklace. And of course, it had his name on it. And I won't mention his name because he didn't give me permission to share the story. But... She goes, ooh, I really like your necklace. I want, ooh, I want me one of those. He goes, well, you can have this one. And she goes, but it has your name on it. He said, yeah, but you don't have to wait. You can have it today. <laughs> Half price. Right? But that's kind of the story of our life sometimes, isn't it? We don't want to wait, and waiting for us is hard because if you read in the Bible, how many people know that God made some folks wait? And I'm not talking about like a five-minute wait. I'm not even talking about like a year wait. I'm not even talking about like a five- to seven-year wait, which sounds exhausting in itself. There are some people that waited for 40 years or more. Let me put it to you another way. There are some people, according to Hebrews chapter 11, that waited and 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 never saw it full, come to full fruition. But you know what? They trusted in God. And so the wait was worth it. But it's difficult for us, isn't it? I mean, the reality is how many of us would wait 40 years? Because we want to be called today, don't we? And we get frustrated when we've got to wait three months, don't we? We get frustrated when we've got to wait two weeks. 
We get frustrated because we don't want to wait because waiting is difficult. And what it does is it strips our reliance away and our dependence from God because what happens is we resort to this little God mentality, the little G God mentality that we think we're actually in control. And can I just be honest with you? I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced this, but when I try to take the little G God mantle back on, man, it drains me. It's frustrating to me. It's draining to me when I think that I'm actually in full control instead of relying on him. I love what Ebenezer Erskine says. He's a Scottish minister. He said this, and they'll put it up on the screen. Well, this is very convicting. I don't even know if I want to read it. So often we give God partial obedience. We do not dare to disobey, but we do not care to obey fully, so we compromise. We do some of what we should, thus removing the stigma, quote, unquote, of disobedience, but we refrain from the most difficult or objectionable or uncomfortable part and thus try to get the best of both worlds. I don't know if anybody else has ever been there, but this guy has. Right? Can we go back and read that one more time, guys, in the media? Can we go back and read that? So often we give God's partial obedience. See, partial obedience is not obedience. We do not dare to disobey, but we do not care to fully. In other words, we take the full plan of God, and like a teacher does when they're grading tests or something, and they circle and marks out with red ink. That's what we do to God's plan. We go, oh, let's change this. Let's put this here. Let's put me here. Let's put a whole bunch of red ink here and take this out. But we do not care to, so we compromise. And the part that we gravitate the most towards, can we go to the next part? right, is what happens is we tend to be people that gravitate to the easy part of God's will, right? But we do some of what we should, thus removing the stigma of disobedience, but we refrain from the most difficult and objectable and uncomfortable part and thus try to get the best of both worlds. Let me put it to you another way that we all understand. We cannot live a Christianity that says, I want my cake and eat it too. Because you're called, when you make that decision for Christ, to sacrifice everything for him, and it stops becoming about you, and it starts becoming all about him. But how many people know this is really hard? Yes? It's really hard. Have you ever been in this moment, in this season in your life, you're like, come on, God, really? See, the Bible doesn't say, I will show you all the details. How many people like all the details? For some of you detail-oriented person, you like it spelled out. You like your list. You like everything outlined. But the Bible doesn't say that God will show you all the details. And then you can walk it out. Because how many people know it's a lot easier to walk something out when everything is, the signs are shown for you, when it's all spelled out? Yes? It's so easy. But that's not what the Scripture says. But rather, he commands us to walk with him, listen, to walk with him, to step out in obedience. And as we walk with him, he begins to reveal the plan for our lives. Some of us are in that stage where we want to take the step, but we're like this. And God is saying, if you will take that first step, my word will light your path. Why? Because I'm in relationship with you. You can trust me. I'm a father who wants to be involved in every part of your life. It's not always easy. It doesn't always make sense. How many people have been serving God for a while? It doesn't always make sense, does it? Can I get a witness from some old school folks, you know, that have been doing it for a minute? It doesn't always make sense. It's not always easy. But the main goal, listen to me, the main goal is not for you to come into those doors and it just be all about you. The main goal is for God to reveal his will for your life to ultimately bring him glory in and through your life. That is the ultimate goal, is to bring glory to God. So why wouldn't God want to reveal his will for your life? Because if he doesn't reveal the will for your life, then he doesn't get glory in your life. Come on now. But it's not a revelation issue. It's a reading the Bible issue. It's a relying on God issue. And then the third thing is, I think this is a crippler, right? Is a relinquishing fear issue. That we hold on to fear. And it keeps us from fully fulfilling the will of God. From fully going after the will of God for our lives. 
a relinquishing fear issue. See, the main reason we fear, if I'm just to be brutally honest with you, the main reason we fear is because we doubt God's love for us. I don't want you to raise your hand, but there have been many seasons in my life where I doubted God's love for me because I wasn't loved in the world. And what I tried to do was I tried to put that on God and go, well, God's just going to love me the same. And so it caused me to be fearful, which caused me to distrust God, which caused me to walk away from God and be distant from God. And so I I held on to the fear, and the fear controlled me, and it paralyzed me. And see, when we doubt his love, how many people know that we begin to become fearful and worried? And when you're fearful and worrying all the time, how many people know that you take back the control from God? Yes? When When you're fearful and have distrust, you go, God, I'll take my control back, please. Take my control back, God. And the enemy knows that. Our greatest adversary knows that. But here's the thing. Who knows better for you than anyone? God. He knows what's best for you. Here's the other thing that I want to build on real quickly is that God doesn't promise that you'll understand everything or that your, his will for your life will be difficulty free. Um, And that's contrary to the popular prosperity and wealth and theology that we have today. But you will have difficulties. You will have problems. You will have pain, ladies and gentlemen. And sometimes, and I'll just use a PG word here because I get a little carried away. Sometimes it stinks. Where you're crying in your car. You're frustrated and you're angry and you're yelling and you're screaming at God going, why is all this happening to me? Is this your will for my life? And it causes us to fear and it causes us to distrust and it causes us to disobey. But you can be reassured this, that he knows what's best for you. And you may say, well, Pastor Rob, how do you know that? Are you just, are you just supposed to say that because you're a pastor? It's not even supposed to say, it's supposed to say Are you supposed to say that, Pastor Rob? No, because there's been many times in my car where I go, God, your plan really stinks. I'm just being, I mean, I don't know many other pastors. that. I'm just telling you the truth. There's been seasons in my life where I have thought that, that God is like the Riddler from Batman. You remember the Riddler? That everything's like in some kind of riddle and God's like, (laughs) you know, figure it out. Right? But that's how some of us think, right? (laughs) It's like one of those ridiculous things you see on Facebook and they're like, look at this for five seconds and look over here and you'll see a grocery list. You're like, grocery list. I don't see no grocery list. Right? Or look at this for 15 seconds and if you see pink, you're weird. If you see blue, you're okay. If you see yellow, we don't know what you are. So you're like looking at this thing for 10 seconds and you look over there and you go, oh, I'm weird. I, I, I saw blue. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Those things annoy me. But that's how we think God is. Like he's like some Facebook Riddler madman posting on Facebook. Look at this. And then if you see this, that's my will for your life. No, 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 no. God is saying, I want to reveal myself primarily through my word. And if you will reread my word, then you'll become dependent on me. Because you'll know me. You'll trust me. You'll know my character. You'll know that I have a resume that I haven't failed anyone ever. Okay? So God doesn't promise that it will be painless or problemless or difficulty-less, Right? But here's the thing. How do I know that? Listen, here's what the scripture tells us real quickly. We'll read this about fear. Is God wants you to know his will, as they put the scripture up there, because he put his spirit in you to guide you and to lead you. Now, I I don't want to speak too much Christianese here, so I'll make it simple. When you become born again, which means born from above, means I surrendered my life to Christ. He puts his spirit in you now where you have his spirit in you to battle this thing called fear. See, it says, there is no fear in love. This is the amplified version. Some of you know it this way, perfect love casts out all fear. 
dread does not exist, but full grown, complete, full grown drives out fear, right? This is love that's maturing in Christ because fear involves the, the expectation of divine punishment so that no one who's afraid of God's judgment is not perfected in love, has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. Here's what it simply means. I wanted to, I wanted to give you a, just this big version for a minute because when we say perfect love casts out all fear, let me put it to you another way. When God's spirit comes to live inside of you, he wants you to know his will for his life because the Bible says that the spirit, his spirit, will what? Lead you or guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit of God is always going to lead you to the truth of God. The Holy Spirit of God is never going to contradict the word of God. Okay? That's why I don't live my life by God says or people go, well, God told me. Well, listen, I believe you, and I'm not saying that God didn't tell you, but I'm always going to go back to this because God's already told me here. And God told me should never contradict the word of God. God's spirit will never contradict his word. He's always going to lead you and guide you. But here's the one thing I want you to see in regards to fear. His spirit is the number one, and I don't even know if it's proper English, fear kicker butter of fear. In other words, his spirit will go all Dwayne the Rock Johnson on fear in your life. If you're battling fear today, Accept more of his love. Receive more of his love, right? Because his love cast out perfect fear. Let me put it to you in the context of the scripture because what John is talking about here is I'm not afraid of divine punishment because I know that I've been fully justified in Christ through my profession in Christ. So I don't live my life, oh, God's mad at me, oh, God hates me, or God this, or I didn't pray five minutes yesterday, so God must not like me today. I don't live my life that way. Because it's through that kind of fear that the enemy begins to work in you and it causes you to distrust God. It causes you to be distant from God. It causes you to put up a barrier for God. And when you have those barriers and you run away from him, guess what? It stops being his will and it starts becoming your will. See how he works? And just the little small things, he begins to work that way. Let me give you a key truth real quickly at the bottom and we're going to close. And I want to give you some practical application real quickly as we respond. Real quickly, stop asking God to show you his will for your life and start abandoning everything that's keeping you from aligning with his will for your life. Well, Pastor Robin, I'm not supposed to ask God. That's not what I said. Let's go back and read the whole thing again. Stop being so concerned with this Oh, God, show me your will. Oh, God, do this. And start getting rid of anything that is keeping you from reading this, anything that's keeping you from fully surrendering and relying on him, and start saying, God, destroy anything in my life that's keeping me from me from lining up with what you want to do with my life. I promise you, if you do that, God's will will begin to be revealed for your life. So here's what I want to do real quickly as they get ready to lead us in a time of response. I want to give you um, things. Does pretty much everybody have a smartphone or some kind of phone, right? Here's the thing. Sometime today, you don't have to necessarily do it now, but you say, well, I don't have a copy of God's word. Well, there's Bibles that are placed right back here at this back table. There's some that are sporadically pray, placed in the back of the pouch of every seat. But do you know that there's also a, a Bible on your smartphone called the Version Bible app? Okay, this is, how, this is how simple it is. This is how simple and practical I want to make it for you today. I want you to go and download that Bible to your phone if you have a smartphone, all right? If you don't, then take a hard copy. But here's the thing. It has the Bible in all languages. If you go, well, I don't speak English, guess what? They have it in all the languages on the app, all right? So there's excuse number one, God. Well, I don't like to read. Guess what? No worries. It has an audio Bible feature for you. So if you're not a reader, push play and start consuming the Word of God, right? Well, I don't know how to study the Word of God. Guess what? They have Bible study plans for you in this app. Well, I don't know where to begin, Pastor Rob. Guess what again? They have a one-year Bible study plan in there. That's practical tip number one. Go and download that app, and you say, well, Pastor Rob, I'm not, I'm not a reader. 
Start, even if it's five minutes a day, start digesting and consuming God's content for five minutes a day. I'm, I'm going to challenge you this. And in the next 90 days, I want you to come back to me and you say, gosh, man, my life is, it's like God has just like opened up this great thing. And it's like, no, it's not. It's just simply lining up with his will. Because you can't know his will for your life if you never read about his will for your life. In the cliff note versions of the Bible, listen to me, the cliff note version of the Bible is never going to work when it comes to revealing your full destiny that God has for you. So I want you to go get it. It's called the Version app. It's, it's a Version Bible app. You can get it in the, it, it don't matter if you have Android. God loves Android too. So, you know, he, he has it in there as well. I'm teasing. Settle down some folks, right? Here's the other thing I'm going to tell you. Other practical thing. Get yourself some godly counselors and advisors. Okay? And listen, I'm not hating for those that have been on church for one week, but don't go pick someone that's been in church for one week. Pick some people that have lived life and have walked through some things. Pick some seasoned people that have walked. Get yourself around people that you know that are going to all... You want me to tell you how you know a godly man or woman? They're always going to give you advice according to Scripture, but here's what they're going to always say if they're real men and women of God. They're going to always say, you go back to the Scripture yourself, and you go read it. They're always going to point you to Jesus. Quit listening to yes men and yes women. Get yourself in the Word of God so that the word of God will reveal the will of God for your life. And then get yourself around some community. You can start with community groups. That's the best place to start, in my opinion. If you don't know anybody, get into community groups and find some friends. Make some relationships. Okay. And watch what God does. God is not hiding his will from your life. He wants you to know his will for your life. But are you willing to abandon everything and anything that's keeping you from aligning with his will for your life? Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for Jesus. God, would you reveal to us today? God, would you give us a heart, an insatiable desire for your word, that we would consume your word, God, that we wouldn't just wander around aimlessly, God, that we wouldn't be fearful, God, that we wouldn't worry, but that we would give full control to you. God, we give all the keys of the kingdom to you today, all the reins back to you. So here's the first prayer, is if you don't know Jesus today, right in your seat, will you cry out to him? And here's how you start. It's real simple. God, I need you. God, I want you to be in full control of my life. And I'm sorry, God, for trying to make it about something else. I repent, and I'm giving you all the keys to the kingdom. I'm giving it all to you today. Or maybe you've been far away from God for a season and you need just to come back home. God loves prodigals. And he's calling you home today. If that's you, I want you to cry out to him and say, God, I'm coming home. God, I thought I could find love in so many other places. But I realize that only your love is perfect and good. And then for the believer, if you're a Christian today, my prayer for you is that you would give him full control. Maybe little by little in your walk, you've taken little by little portions of control because you've worried or you maybe thought God didn't hear you or God wasn't listening to you. And he's reminded you today that you can trust him. But for all of us, as we respond, let's just say, God, I want nothing else but you. I just want you. I've searched in so many other places, but I just want you and nothing else will do as they lead us. Just stay in this moment. Go ahead, Peyton. Thank you, Jesus. Caught up in your presence. Come on, just right in your seat. I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in You and God. Just humble yourself this morning. Say, God, I need I, I, I'm listening. God. I'm hearing. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't hold me anything. More than anything that you can do. I just want.
out and tell him to squash your plans. Say, God, I want your plans for my life. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. Come on, no hidden agendas, no prideful motives. Jesus, you don't hold me and me. More than anything that you can do. I just want you. everything else. close shop, but I don't want you to leave here today. You say, hey, I need to talk to someone. I just, I know God is speaking to me and I, he is calling me back to him. I don't want you to leave here today. I want you to find someone that has a little blue lanyard on it. just says, how can I help you? And they're going to point you in the right direction. Just because we end it here, God doesn't ever stop doing the work. Okay. But I pray that your prayer today is that nothing else will do. I, I don't, I'm, I've tried everything else, God, and I want you. I don't want your stuff. I want you. I want a relationship with you. And would you let us know about that? If you surrendered to Christ for the first time today, or maybe you've recommitted your life to Christ, you know, that connect card that we talked about earlier, this is right here. Would you fill that out and put it in one of the brown boxes in the cafe area on your way out the door today? We would love to hear from you. We're not going to harass you or bother you. We're just simply going to send you some information and how you can have a deeper and a fuller walk with Christ. And then we're going to close with our offering, our time of offering today. Uh, we do our offering somewhat differently here. We like to go out celebrating and giving to God. And uh, that's mainly for our faith family here at, at Celebration Church. But if God leads you to give, hey, be obedient to that. We promise you this, that we, our prayer every week is that God would use this in such a way that he would get every, every drop of credit for it. The last thing before I pray that I'll make a mention to you real quickly is about next Sunday. We are starting a brand new series called You Asked For It. And the name implies itself because everything we're going to be preaching on for the next four weeks, you submitted on those online forms. Oh, there's paper forms. And my good friend, John Barnett, is going to be here next Sunday. And you don't want to miss it because he's going to talk about spiritual and emotional healing. Okay? Bring a friend. Make sure to be here. It's going to be a powerful, powerful service. And we're really excited about John coming and sharing that with us. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for Jesus. We just want you. That's what our prayer is. We just want you. Would you bless this time of offering, God, as we give back to you, because it's all yours anyways. And would you use it to advance your kingdom? Would you use it to reach people? Would you use it to reach this city and our nation, our town and our world for your glory? We thank you, God. We thank you for being with us today. We love you say amen with me today. Amen. Listen on your way out. If you're a guest, 
We have a little gift for you at our guest services we would love for you to take. Have a great Sunday. We hope to see some of you soon.